Now, a powerful drug trafficker named Kalu Tushara, who was found guilty of trafficking drugs, was sentenced to death by the Colombo High Court today. Justice Gihan Gulatunga delivered the order after the accused was found guilty of two indictments for the possession and trafficking of 25.77 grams of heroin. Kalu Tushara was arrested on the 12th of May 2017 by the Organised Crimes Prevention Division when he was travelling in a motorcycle in Sedavatta, Colombo. At the time of his arrest, he was in the possession of 59 grams of heroin. Now taking a look at your next story, the Controller General of Immigration and Immigration informed Supreme Court by affidavit that Jude Srimantha Jaimaha, who was sentenced on death row and later granted a presidential pardon, has gone overseas. This was revealed when the petition filed challenging the presidential pardon given by former President Maithripala Sirisena by the powers vested in him was taken up today. The matter was called up in the presence of Justices Priyantha Jayavardhana, Vijit Malal Goda and Gamini Amara Sekara. Now taking a look at that story once again, the Controller General of Immigration and Immigration informed Supreme Court by an affidavit that Jude Shramantha Jaimaha, who was on death row and later granted a presidential pardon, had gone overseas. Now moving on to your next story, um, the Caroline Jury of Sri Lanka who crowned, was crowned Mrs. World 2020 arrived in the island earlier today. She arrived in the island at around 2.45 a.m. today on board a Qatar Airways flight from Doha. A large crowd gathered at the Bandaranaik International Airport to welcome the newly crowned Mrs. World. I am proud to bring back this title to my island nation after 35 years. Thank you everyone. I worked hard to win this for my country. The newly crowned Mrs. World then left to Colombo at around 7 a.m. today in a vehicle procession. Department predicts heavy showers between 75 mm to 100 mm in the Trincomalee, Batiklo, Anuradhapura and Polonaro districts. Now the Med Department further says the prevailing weather condition is expected to decrease from tomorrow. We predict the heavy showers currently being experienced in the north will decrease by tomorrow. We predict thunder showers in the eastern, Uva, north central and northern provinces and in the Hambantota districts. We also expect showers after 2 p.m. in several other areas across the island. We predict showers between 75 mm and 100 mm in several areas in the Trincomalee, Batiklo, Anuradhapur and Polonnaruwa districts. Showers between 50 mm and 75 mm are expected in the western and Sabargamo provinces and in the Gaul and Matra districts. Meanwhile, the National Building Research Organization said landslide warnings have been issued to some divisional secretariats in five districts. The senior geologist of the landslide department of the NBRO, Dr. Vasanta Senadira, said the announcement was made for the New Aurelia, Kandy, Monoragala, Ratnapura and Badulla districts. Now taking a look at one of your headline making stories this afternoon, Ghanaian Bannister Francis, the employee who was allegedly abducted and threatened in Colombo, arrived at the CID again to provide a statement earlier today. Jamal Ratnayaka joins us from the location. The issue surrounding a string of events where a Swiss Embassy employee or a female employee of the Swiss Embassy allegedly being abducted and threatened has gained much public attention over the past few weeks. Now the CID has taken action and uh, therefore they have requested the female employee by the name of Garnier Francis to arrive at the CID and provide a statement. Now the CID had notified her to provide a statement on Sunday and accordingly she had provided a statement till 2.30 a.m. on Monday morning, that is last morning. And yet again, yesterday, she had uh, arrived at the CID to provide a statement from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. onwards. And the CID had notified her yet again to arrive this morning uh, to provide a statement. And she is currently within 
um, the CID premises providing her statement. Now yesterday when she was uh, presented before the Kalambo High Court, Kalambo High Court Judge Lanka Zaratna extended the travel ban which was imposed on her and also referred to her to a judicial medical officer as well. And uh, this is the latest update from this current story. Stay with News First uh, as we bring you the latest updates over our news bulletins. I'm Jamal Ratnaika for the News First team. A meeting between the State Minister of Public Administration and Home Affairs Mahinda Samar Singha and state employees of the Kalutara district was held yesterday. During the meeting, the State Minister informed the officers of the benefits due to be received by state employees as per the manifesto of President Kothabe Rajapaksa. The meeting was attended by secretaries of the Kalutara district and senior government officials. Happy, uh, we constantly talk about maintaining an environment where no external influence will affect state employees and their work. But we need to include this in our culture. When you work hand in hand with the people, someone may be threatened. We have noticed at times behind those threats are political powers. They are promised protection by these political powers. This cannot happen. Government servants should be free from external influences to execute their duties and take sound decisions. That is how we can gain the trust of the common man. Now MP Sara Tamangama addressed the media yesterday at a media briefing held in Kandy. In the end, we can only prevent corruption through an election and not by law. We should not vote for thieves and corrupt people. But in Sri Lanka, they are the ones who obtain the most number of votes. We must inquire about such corrupt individuals and refrain from voting for them. In another one of your headline-making stories, this year's Sri Pada pilgrimage season begins tomorrow. The casket and the statue of God Saman arrived at the Sri Pada Raj Mahaviharia Viharia today. It is a tradition to arrive in four processions via four routes to the Sri Pada Viharia or the Adam's Peak Temple, with the traditional rituals being followed by the chief incumbent of the Sri Pada Viharia, Venerable Bengamue Dhammadin Nathera. The first procession started at the auspicious time of 5.50 this morning. Likewise, the first procession will take place via the Hatton Nallathaniya route, the second procession via the Ratnapura Palabaddala route, the third across Balangoda to Maskelia and the fourth across Kuruvita Eratna to the Sri Pada Viharaya. The Sri Pada season which starts tomorrow will conclude by the next Visakpoe day. One person died in an accident that took place along the Anradhapura New Candy Road at the Bhatia Mavata Junction last night. Around 8 p.m. yesterday, two people sustained injuries after being knocked down by a vehicle which fled the scene immediately. The two individuals were then admitted to the Anradhapura Teaching Hospital while a spokesperson of the hospital said one individual succumbed to his injuries after being admitted to the hospital. The deceased is a 50-year-old man. The Anradhapura police are conducting further investigations to locate the motor vehicle that fled the scene. Civilians living in 19 districts, 131 divisional secretariats have faced issues due to the wild elephant threats as stated by the Wildlife Department. The Director of the Wildlife Department, General Chandana Surya Bandara, stated that quick measures are in place to resolve the issue. He further stated that 200 wildlife personnel have been deployed to the areas affected by the threat. The director stated that civil security assistance has been acquired to control the issue. Firearms have been purchased from the Navy and distributed among civil security. 16 elephant crossings have been identified as main areas where these wild elephants usually roam. According to the wildlife department, the number of people who lost their lives due to the wild elephant conflict amounts to 14 this year. According to reports, 379 wild elephants have been found dead. We are now joined by News First Tarusha Kumara Singha for an update on the 13th South Asian Games. Tarusha. Very good afternoon to all our viewers watching Lunchtime News on TV1. Now, today marks the last day of the South Asian Games 2019 uh, held in Nepal, Kathmandu. And this time, uh, it has been a historic uh, milestone for Sri Lanka 
actually because uh, Sri Lanka was able to uh, compete uh, shoulder to shoulder uh, with uh, India, uh, our neighboring country, which uh, they are regarded as one of the front runners in the games as well. Uh, if you take a look at the medals tally as of now, uh, the total medals tally uh, India stands at number one with 162 gold medals, 91 silver and 44 bronze uh, with a total medals tally of 297. Number two is uh, Nepal, the hosts with 49 gold medals, 55 silver and 92 bronze medals uh, with a total of 196. Uh, at the number three position is Sri Lanka uh, with 39 gold medals, 79 silver and 119 bronze medals uh, with a total medal tally of 237 with a little bit, a uh, little shy away from India. But this achievement, this feat doesn't come uh, with along some uh, unpleasant bad news as well. Uh, well, News First have been reporting uh, constantly about the complications that arose uh, with these athletes uh, in terms of uh, uh, flights, uh, wrong flights, delayed flights that they have to take, uh, that they had to take before the uh, games, uh, attending to the games and complications with accommodation back in uh, Nepal, Kathmandu. But one significant fact takes center stage that is 13 athletes were contracted with dengue during the games and it is reported that uh, most of these athletes were gold medal hopefuls. When News First delved deep into the matter, we found out that these athletes lodged uh, at the Sugatatasa Sports Complex before departing to the games and uh, while delving deeper into the matter, we found out that the Sugatatasa Sports Complex is at a appalling environmental condition where a trash and waste are just lying around the premises and dengue larvae is being found at the premises as well. Yesterday, uh, the Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs, Dallas Salaha Peruma, inspected uh, the premises and according to him, uh, that the condition of the Sukhutasa Sports Complex is at a appalling uh, condition and uh, according to him that um, it is due to the negligence and the mismanagement of the authorities who have been taking care of the sports complex as well. Adding further, he said that uh, the sports complex was under five chairmen, uh, three managing directors and four ministers who were uh, taking uh, conflicting decisions uh, throughout the last five years. What we here at News First have to say is what happened has happened and we sincerely hope that proper investigation will be launched uh, to this incident. But as of now, these athletes have gone to Kathmandu to represent Sri Lanka, representing our country. Isn't it the utmost responsibility of the authorities to bring them back safely? Isn't it the least thing, the last thing that they can do? With that note, it's back to the studio. Thank you, Tarusha, for that rather comprehensive report. And with that, it's a wrap of Lunchtime News here on TV1. Thank you for joining in. For the News First team, I'm Amavi Banagoda. Have a good day.